So far we have seen that a system of linear equations with three variables can be represented as set of planes in three dimensional space. And if we replace one of the planes in such a system by its linear combination with another plane in the system, then it amounts to the rotation of that plane. And because such a rotation occurs about their line of intersection, it does not disturb the solution of the system. And finally, the process of linear combination can be used to drive the system to a simplified configuration, which makes the solution of the system clearly visible. We will be looking at the same process here, but with reference to a series of row operations on matrices called as the Gauss-Jordan elimination. Here is the system of equations we will be starting with and we will be reducing it by some manipulations to a simplified system like this, x equal to a, y equal to b, and z equal to c. Of course, these operations can be done using matrices as well. So we will first represent this system as this matrix, the so-called coefficient matrix, because it carries all the coefficients of x, y, and z in these equations here. To this matrix, if we append the right-hand side of the equations, you will get what is called as the augmented matrix. So we will be starting from this augmented matrix, do some row operations and ultimately reach a matrix that represents this simplified system or our solution. So here is that simplified matrix. So you can see, except for these diagonal elements, which have coefficients 1, everywhere else we have the coefficients 0. And we know this matrix is of course called as the unit matrix. Now while we are doing these operations, we'll also be watching this pane where we'll be looking at the process graphically. So we'll start with some coordinate frame and start representing the three given equations as planes. Let's now do our first row operation. Row operations are basically linear combinations of rows. So we'll be taking some multiple of row 1, adding it to row 2, so as to get a 0 here. Now it's clear what we need to do. This is minus 1 and this 1. So we'll simply add the two rows. We will write this as R2 plus R1. And here is the resulting matrix. Now you can see the first row is going to remain intact, while the second row is going to get altered. Now what is the effect of this row operation over here? We can see the row 1 has remained unaltered, so green plane will not move. The second row has changed, so this yellow plane is going to alter. And linear combinations do not disturb solutions or solution sets. So what the two planes have in common will not alter. So the line of intersection of those two planes, this line, and even the intersection of all the three planes, which is bound to lie on that line, will not be disturbed. And what it amounts to? Well, it amounts to the rotation of our second plane, the yellow plane. And it will assume a new position. Let us now do the second row operation where we'll be getting a zero here. So let's take row one and simply subtract from row three. So R3 minus R1, and here is the resulting matrix. Graphically speaking, the green plane has not moved, but the red one would, keeping what they have in common intact. So that's their line of intersection. So this row operation amounts to rotation of this red plane about the common line of intersection of green and red. With the next row operation, we'll try to get a zero here. And we can do that by taking twice the second row and adding it to the third row. So here is the row operation and the resulting matrix. Uh, we got this 3 and 9. So we divided uh, row 3 by 3 to get 1 and 3 here. Graphically speaking, that will keep the yellow plane intact. So this will not be moving at all. While the red plane will be rotating about their common line of intersection. So here, like this. Now, watch as it assumes its final position. The final position of the plane is now parallel to the xy plane. And this is very useful because it is going to intersect only the z axis. And perhaps now is a good time to take a step back and have an overview of the process of what's going on. Here, the three equations, or these three rows, or these three planes, are in a beautiful process of cooperation. They are all working together, a pair at a time. And in that pair, one plane remains fixed and it provides the support, it provides the pivot or axis of rotation to the other plane. And the other plane rotates to a simpler orientation. For example, here, this plane has assumed the orientation parallel to the x and y axis, 
thereby intersecting only the z-axis and giving us the z-coordinate of our solution. We'll be doing the same with the remaining two planes now. With the next row operation, let's get a zero here. For that, we'll take row two and subtract row three from it. So that's the row operation, and here is the resulting matrix. Over here, uh, that means the red plane will be remaining fixed, and about their line of intersection, the yellow plane will be rotating like this. And uh, now that has assumed a very useful position. It is parallel to the x and z axis, and therefore it is cutting only the y axis, giving us directly the y intercept as the y coordinate of our solution. Now only plane 1 is remaining in the original orientation, and we'll have to simplify it by taking help of the other two planes. We do that with a row operation that will make the zeros here and here. So first we'll get this zero by subtracting row number 3 from row number 1. So here is the row operation R1 minus R3, and here is the resulting matrix. Geometrically, this means plane 1 is now rotating about a line of intersection with plane 3. Here is that line of intersection, and as it rotates, you can see it is slowly become parallel to the z-axis. And that is apparent from this zero here as well. When the coefficient of z is zero, the plane becomes parallel to that axis. Finally, the last row operation that will get us zero here. We'll take row one and subtract row two from it. So here is the row operation and the resulting matrix. And we got the unit matrix we were looking for over here. So this is the solution. Now let us see the geometry of it. We are going to take the line of intersection of plane one and two. And about that line, plane one is going to rotate. And it will rotate until it becomes parallel to the y, z plane. So it intersects on the x-axis. And that intercept gives us the x-coordinate of our solution. We can read the solution. x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. Graphically, the solution can be read as the x, y, and z intercepts made by this simplified set of planes. So we take the first plane, which is making the x-intercept at x equal to 1. Then we take the second plane, which is making the y-intercept at y is equal to 2. And then we take the third plane, uh, which is making the z-intercept at z equal to 3. So x equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z equal to 3 is our solution. This is the Gauss-Jordan elimination process.